This episode is sponsored by Lino, the world's largest independent cloud computing provider. Stick around, I'll tell you, you can get $100 in credit on a new Linode account. Hey there, my name's Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. Now, if you've done any kind of command line work on Linux or other Unix-like operating systems, you've surely come across the sudo or sudo command that allows you to raise your privileges to allow you to execute commands at the root level. Now, most people just know you stick sudo in front of the command you want to do, and that allows you to do it uh, as root that's all they know but in fact there's much more to this command than meets the eye so if you want to discover some of the super secret powers of sudo please let me explain Okay, this is going to be a command line tutorial so i went over to linode and i started up a machine using the dashboard Okay, let's go to the command line. Okay, so generally speaking, in uh, Linux and in Unix, there are two type of users. There's the normal user, like I am here, who am I, Gary? Okay, and there is root, and root has, it's kind of the administrator. Root can do everything, whereas normal users have their privileges limited in some way. So for example, if I wanted to uh, edit the etc. slash host file, I'm using touch here, which basically changes the uh, date on the file okay if i try to do that i can't do it permission denied i'm not allowed you are not allowed to do that but i can do it if i was root now there are different ways you can get this root access one for example is you can use the su command which uh, is substitute user or maybe you might call it super user because it turns you into the root user and when you do that, you need to know the root password. And now you are logged in as root. And you can see there the hash sign here showing me that I'm actually logged in uh, as root. And if I try to now touch etc. slash hosts, uh, I can do that no problem because I'm, I'm root. I am the super user. I am the administrator. But of course, if you have uh, many people or even just more than one person on your system, you don't want to be handing out your uh, root password. In fact, you probably want the root password to be very, very long and complicated so that if somehow access is again to your machine, they're not going to log in uh, as root. So how do you give normal users the ability to do administrative tasks with the kind of the root privileges, with super user privileges, without having to give them away the root password? And that's where sudo comes into it. So it's super user do or substitute user do, run a command as a different user. Normally that user is root. So now if I do sudo touch, such etc slash hosts it lets me do it as long as it i give a password and whose password is to give not the root password but my password so that just authenticates that i am who i say i am and now i've done it no permission denied it let me do that so sudo allows me to run a command as the root user but i still remain logged in as myself and there's a bit of authentication to make sure that it is me that's doing that and not somebody else that's come to your keyboard However, if you do want to get, you know, doing these sudo commands, it kind of, after five minutes, it times out, it'll ask you the password again. So you can do a few commands. So if I, if I run that command again, I can do it without giving a password. But after five minutes, it would actually uh, ask me for the password again. And that can be a bit annoying. So some systems, for example, the Raspberry Pi, they even remove this request for the password. So how would you do that if you need to do that? Well, we're going to look in a file called slash etc slash sudoers. Sudoers, the people who do the things, the doers, but these are the super user doers or the substitute user doers. Now, this is a very heavily protected file. In fact, I can't even look at it. Can't use more or less. Uh, on it by uh, just looking at it. So I need to do sudo, let's use less this time, etc. slash uh, super doers. And here it is, there's the file. Now we're going to dive into this file in a minute, but I can access it if I do uh, use the sudo command. Now, if you want to change it, you should use vi sudo, and that in itself is a privileged command. So you need to do sudo vi sudo. And that will bring you up into an editor that is allowing you to edit directly the uh, super user uh, or the super substitute user doers file. So what we need to do is go down here. Now, here we can see that it says percent sudo all all. Allow all members 
of the group sudo to execute any command. So that's what the all the all stuff is. It can do any command. And the sudo stuff there tells you you've got to be a member of the sudo group. If we just go out of here for a second and I type groups, you can see that I am Gary. I'm a member of the Gary group and I'm a member of the sudo group. So I can actually, I am allowed to run sudo, which is what I've been doing. Now, if you go down here and you change this and just insert here before that last all, no password WD, not Word, but WD, as is, as is the way with Linux and Unix. Okay, and now save that file. And now if I try to do touch, slash, etc slash, uh, hosts, it won't ask me for the password, even after five minutes when the timeout comes around, it's never going to ask me for the password because we've disabled that. But we're actually going to go back in and put that back because there are some other things that we're going to play with later that having this turned on is actually useful for what we're going to do. So let's just get rid of that now. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so if I have another user, for example, I have another user on this system called David. Now, David is not a member of the super uh, users group or the sudo group. Let's log in as David. So you can do a, a, a substitute user, David. Okay, I happen to know David's password. Now, if we type in groups here, we can see that David is not a member of the sudo group. So if we try with uh, David to say touch as etc slash host is going to say give me David's password. And then it says, oh, David is not in the sudo as file. This incident will be reported. So David can't do any administration commands on this machine. So we might want to add him. So if we do want to add him, how do we do that? Well, let's go back to the uh, Gary because Gary uh, has uh, sudo privileges. And so what you do is you say sudo user mod, so modify a user, and we're going to append something to the user. And what we're going to append is a group and you, you put in sudo so we're going to add the sudo group to which user? David. So run the user modify command. You're appending. What are you appending? A group. What group? Sudo. Who are you doing it for? David. Okay, now David is part of the sudo group. So if we log in again now as uh, David, and I know David's password, as I said before, okay, to run a command as administrator, use a root, use sudo cman sudo root for details. So now I can actually, if I type groups, there he is, David is part of the sudo group. So he could now do other things like touch slash etc slash uh, host, for example, and ask for his password. And that's absolutely fine. He can do that. This episode is sponsored by Linode, the largest independent cloud computing provider. Whether you're an experienced developer, user, or just starting out, you can build on Linode. Start from scratch and fully customize your server for any application or use their one-click apps to deploy game servers, websites, personal VPNs, and much more. Whether you just need a basic website for your portfolio or a beefy GPU instance for AI, scientific computing, and computer graphics projects, Linode has the flexibility and the scalability to meet your needs. If you run into any trouble during setup, Linode comes with amazing 24-7 customer support by phone or ticket, along with hundreds of guides and tutorials to help you get started. Sign up today at linode.com slash Gary Explains and get $100 in credit on your new Linode account. The link is in the description. Now you saw there that I did substitute user, which is the uh, for, for David. You can actually do this uh, using um, sudo without knowing David's password. So here I had to do substitute user David. I need to know his password. Okay, but if I actually do this with sudo, what I can do is sudo minus i minus u David. Okay, and there I am. I'm now logged in uh, as David without knowing his password. So sudo allows you to become another user without knowing that user's password. Now that you've learned that, I can imagine all your little minds now going, ah, oh, I know what I'm going to do the next time I log into my college, school, university, whatever <laughs> server. There you go. There's a nice little one for you. So here's another example. If I wanted to do more such etc. slash sudoers, which of course I can't access, but I think, oh, I want to do it now with sudo. A shortcut is you do sudo exclamation mark, exclamation mark, bang, bang, pling, pling, depending on how you pronounce it. And that will basically redo the previous command, the last command you typed, but as uh, super do it. And there you go. I, I, I access, access the file now. And you can see it when you do command and recall, it actually, it gives me that actual command. So let's just clear that 
there there you go su sudo more sudo so that's a quick way if you forget to type sudo in front of something and then you want to go back and do the last command particularly if it was a long complicated command with lots of directories and flags and all that you can actually just do that quickly using uh, sudo exclamation mark exclamation mark now with all this stuff going on in your system you may want to log what actually happens on your system so there is a way of creating a file that will log all sudo activity. So here at this part where it says defaults, here you can change the, believe it or not, the defaults. Okay, so what we're gonna change now is we're gonna say the default now log file, which isn't specified before, var slash log slash sudo dot log, for example. Okay, so that now says that all sudo commands have to be, will be recorded and registered in that file. So now if I do a sudo slash except, uh, touch, slash etc slash hosts if I could type okay there we go now if we look in more if we do a more of var slash log slash sudo and I need to be super users let's do our magic command there we go and there is a log and you can see here when I'm making this uh, video uh, now 30th of October here is the command where I did the touch, and here is actually the card itself when I actually viewed the log file itself. So you can see everything is being logged, tells you who did it, Gary, gives you the date and time, what their working directory was, and so on. So if you've got lots of things going on in your server, maybe you've got a couple of people who use it, and you want to make sure you know what they've been doing, having that log file is very, very interesting. Now, of course, with great power comes great responsibility. So another thing you can do in sudo is you can make sure that everybody gets a warning all the time about um, the powers that they've got using sudo. So you can turn on lecture is equal to always. And lecture as in I'll, I'll give you a lecture as in I'll give you a warning. So now if we turn that on, if I now do sudo, now here's a quick tip I want to give you. If you do sudo minus k, that will make sure that it'll ask you for the password. It expires that timer of five minutes and always make sure you do a password because the lecture will only come up every time you ask for a password. It won't come up when you don't ask for a password, when it doesn't need to ask for a password. So if we again do sudo touch etc slash hosts, we trust you have received the usual lecture from your local system administrator. It usually boils down to these two things. Respect the privacy of others. Think before you type. With great power comes great responsibility. And now I type in my password and then it was able to uh, change the date timestamp on that file. So etc slash hosts. Of course, if I do it again now, it won't ask me because it's not asking me for the password. But if I do sudo minus K and now run it again, it will ask me, it will give me that. So when it's asking, prompting for something, it will give you that lecture. So that will come every single time it asks you for a password. And of course, having that lecturing going on is great when you've got users that don't really do much system administration, but if you're all day kind of in and out, fiddling with files and configuring things and looking at your system, you don't want that message to come up all the time. So we can do something that only affects the people who are not in a, in a certain group, let's say in a trusted group group of special secret admins. So down here in the user alias section, what we can type here is user alias trusted, this is the name of this group that I'm going to create, and we can say equal to Gary. So there's only one user in the uh, in the trusted group, and of course that's me, who else would, would be in there? And all the other users, like old David there, well, he still needs to get lectured. So what you do is you say defaults trusted. So this is now something that only applies to the trusted group don't lecture exclamation mark again in many languages like in the c programming language means uh, not so trusted group doesn't get lectured so now if we uh, make sure that the password is expired and so to prove that it doesn't do it so if we do sudo uh, touch etc slash hosts okay ask me for the password but you notice there no lecture course because I am in the trusted group but if we go over to uh, old David's account and see what he can do so let's make sure his password is expired so sudo touch etc slash hosts he gets the big lecture there Res respect the privacy with great power comes great responsibility and then I can type in his password and there I there he is so there you go Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something about sudo. If you did, please do give this video a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.